Hello, and welcome to Mount Vernon. As you can see, we're back, we're open. My name is Jeremy Ray, I'm the Director of Interpretation here, and I'd like to share with you some of the things that are available to do on site now that we have returned. All of this information can be found at www.mountvernon.org open. To begin with, if you're coming onto the estate, it is an outdoor experience uh, at the moment, which means you're able to walk around and see the grounds and the outside of the mansion, the lovely view of the river, which is over here behind my shoulder. Uh, and you can also engage with some of our staff. We have history interpreters stationed outside of the mansion, of uh, the front side and the west side. Uh, they're there to answer any questions that you have, uh, provide any uh, discussions that you want to get into. We also have character interpreters around on site. So you can engage with people like Dr. James Craig, the general's uh, personal physician, uh, Caroline Branham, an enslaved chambermaid, Tobias Lear, the general's personal secretary, and Frank Lee, the general's enslaved uh, valet, excuse me, butler. Uh, now also you can check out some of our sites like the tomb, you can see the Pioneer Farm, you can see the upper and lower gardens, as well as the slave quarters and the slave cabins. Uh, we also are very excited to announce that as of today, our award-winning museum Lives Bound Together, highlighting the lives of the enslaved community, the hundreds of enslaved people that lived here at Mount Vernon, uh, can be explored now. It is now open as long uh, as well as our education center. We're also excited to offer a brand new specialty tour uh, that focuses on George Washington's accomplishments through the prism of the popular play Hamilton, the musical. That's of course on Disney Plus, it'll be available on July 3rd. Uh, so you can watch the play and then come here to Mount Vernon and learn all about George Washington's life through that. Singing is optional, but encouraged if you'd like to join along. We also have a lot of new and exciting programs uh, for, for, that are angled towards our younger audiences. On Thursday mornings, we have Mindful Mornings where you can come out to the East Lawn, the Piazza, you can sit, you can reflect, drawing is encouraged. We also have animal spotlights on the weekend, Saturdays and Sundays at 11 o'clock, uh, where we go down and talk about the many different animals that were found here on the farm. Also, starting this weekend, we have our take-home crafts available. Uh, the take-home crafts are operated to completely touch-free. We have demonstrations, and then they give you a nice sealed and clean uh, craft to take home that you can then put together for yourself. Also available to see our trades department. I've mentioned the farm before, uh, but also our blacksmith shop. You may be able to hear it in the background as I talk. They're working away in there, uh, making some of the tools and items uh, in the same fashion of the 18th century. Uh, it's all very exciting time for us to be open. Some of the things that we are looking forward to uh, in the near future, we have our sold out uh, 4th of July Independence Firework event. Uh, that's what the little tent is there right behind me getting ready for that. But also we want to welcome folks out on the 4th of July, uh, celebrate the nation's independence with the founding father. Uh, the 1st Virginia Regiment will be on site. They'll be conducting drills and General Washington will be there reviewing the troops. Also, something else coming up as starting this weekend, we have our new Through My Eyes specialty tour experience. This is a walking tour around on the grounds with our character interpreters and they're discussing what their day-to-day -day life was like on the estate. And again, that's Dr. Craig, Caroline Branham, the enslaved chambermaid, Frank Lee, the enslaved butler, or Tobias Lear leading those tours. Uh, so again, we're very excited to have you come out and visit with us today. Uh, I'll be happy to take any questions that you might have. Great, thank you, Jeremy. We have a question from Werner. He said, how long will the mansion stay closed? Will the staff continue to do their excellent morning, afternoon, and evening programs through July and August? That's an excellent question. At this point in time, we are trying our hardest to make sure that we are offering a safe and informative tour into the mansion. And we're actually hoping to have it available pretty soon. So keep an eye out, probably in the next week or two, we hope to have an announcement on opening up the mansion. Of course, we are following the governor's orders for Virginia. So safety for you and our staff are the highest priority. Uh, so we wanna make sure we're doing everything possible, make sure high touch, high contact surfaces are properly cleaned, disinfected, we're following all protocols. Uh, so sometime soon we'll have the mansion open, 
But in the meantime, yes, we will still continue to offer all of these outdoor experiences with our staff and our characters. Uh, we've made sure to put a lot of safety protocols in place for them as well, uh, creating designated spaces that create the proper social distancing uh, so that you can feel safe and comfortable when engaging with our staff here. Great. Thanks, Jeremy. So uh, Carol said, very excited to be headed back to see the general and Mrs. Washington, long-term members who will continue to always support Mount Vernon. Thank you, Carol. Can you talk a little bit about what members can expect if that's a different experience than visiting as the public? Yes. First off, I want to say thank you so much for being a member. Uh, members like you and anyone else who are interested, please go onto our website and see. It is critical and crucial for us to be able to tell the story here at Mount Vernon to have your support. So once again, thank you very much for that continued support. Uh, we're actually looking into a lot of uh, special membership offerings. We had a member only uh, opening earlier in the week. Uh, we have a lot of member only live streams where our president, uh, Dr. Bradburn, has been in conversations with well-renowned historians. In fact, coming up, one of the uh, ones coming up for our members is with uh, Annette uh, Gordon-Reed, uh, who is an excellent historian, has done a lot of work uh, with uh, Thomas Jefferson, Sally Hemings. Uh, so that'll be an interesting, fantastic conversation. Um, and we're looking into other uh, possible events for members to help thank them for their continued support. Excellent. And Diane said, very excited about the Hamilton tour. Kudos to the brilliant person who came up with this awesome idea. So that's good to hear. Thanks, Diane. Um, and we have Mary says, I can't wait to get back there. We look forward to having you soon, Mary. Aaron says, hello from San Diego, California. Can you talk a little bit about those who live far from us that maybe can't visit or can't visit because of other reasons? Yes, absolutely. We have continued to upgrade our virtual and online offerings as well. We have a virtual tour. You're welcome to check that out online. If you are unable to come out, obviously we'd love to see you, but we completely understand with everything going on about restrictions and travel and everybody's own personal safety. Uh, we are also offering virtual VIP tour experiences for a set price. Uh, you can get an online engagement with a lot of our staff members, uh, like myself, um, Steve Bayshore, who's our director of trades, uh, can, can jump on, tell you a little bit about the grist mill and distilling process. Uh, we record these sessions that you then are able to keep and you can share with your family. So if you are unable to make the trip, unable to gather everybody, do that big fun family outing, uh, we have an opportunity uh, to go through, share all the same information, and then share it among your family at your convenience. Uh, so look to our website. We've got a lot of fantastic things there. Perfect. Thank you, Jeremy. And we have a question from Cynthia, I think. There she is. Do you have any plans to do some focused online classes or workshops during this partial opening? I am super excited for the plans either way smiley face emoji. <laughs> yes, excellent. So we are, unfortunately, we've had to cancel some of our on-site teachers institutes, but our education department is continuously uh, engaging with our teaching staff. Uh, we have the wonderful Sadie Troy that you guys have seen on the Teaching Tuesdays live streams. Uh, she's fantastic engaging with students and teachers and a lot of online engagement. So again, go to our website to, to look for that. We are, are still continually uh, seeking to continue the conversation with our fantastic teachers. Great. And Geraldine said, I miss the daily online programs. Any chance they will return soon? That is an excellent question. And I know at least within my department, we are thinking about ways that we can try to bring a lot of our experiences here on site out uh, to others who aren't able to make it. Uh, so just keep an eye out. We're constantly reevaluating what we're doing and trying to make sure we're getting this information out to everyone. Super. And we have a question from David. Um, this is actually more of a history question, but I know that you are willing to take those too. So David asks, were animals allowed to graze on the large expanse of lawn that we're seeing behind you um, back in George Washington's day? And if not, how were the lawns maintained? That's a fantastic question. So here it's landscaped out and it looks like a continuous expanse. Uh, but what you can't see is there's actually a hidden wall that rings this area around the mansion. They were called Ha ha walls. So the landscape goes up to the top. The wall then drops down behind it. There's usually a little bit of a ditch around it. And that prevented a lot of the grazing animals that were around in the area from coming up onto Washington's leisure area. 
So the grass main uh, was maintained. It was, this of course is uh, 8,000 acre plantation. There were enslaved people on the estate, about 318 enslaved uh, people on the Mount Vernon property by the end of Washington's life. Here at the Mansion House Farm, there was approximately 90 enslaved individuals, uh, including those who would use sides and whetstones to sharpen the blades, who would cut down the grass and then use rolling stones to kind of flatten it out, flatten the surface. So again, that was a, that was forced manual labor that was maintaining uh, the lawn in Washington's time. Excellent. And Cynthia has another question. She says, in terms of planned tours, what is the max limit of people that each tour can take? That, that's also a great question. Uh, we're, again, we're following very strictly the guidance that is provided for us by the CDC and the governor of Virginia. And right now, these uh, museums are limited to 50% capacity in a lot of the areas where we're able to open up. Uh, and even then, in the cases for like the mansion, we wanna make sure that we're offering a safe space as possible. So for our specialty tours, Currently, they are limited to 10 people on a tour. Uh, we have spent a lot of time plan planning and prepping, walking around on the space to make sure that we have shaded areas that are comfortable for guests, but also allow for everybody to spread out and keep their safe uh, six feet of social distancing uh, in between. Uh, when we open up the mansion as well, we're gonna make sure that we limit it so that we have a safe environment for those to pass through. Excellent. And Adam said, love being back for the members reopening. Thank you, Adam, for coming and being a member. Uh, plenty of safeguards, no big crowds. Since the public reopening, how has attendance been? Is there a limit on the number of visitors allowed in at a time? First off, I want to say, hi, Adam. It was nice meeting you. I actually got to meet <laughs> you the other day, and it was uh, very nice talking with you. So thank you again for your support. Thank you for coming out. And it's been it's been great. Uh, the attendance, we obviously love to engage with as many people as possible. We love to welcome out more. But right now, it's a fantastic time to come out uh, because typically you know, we have thousands of visitors a day. And that makes it a little difficult for us sometimes to get into you know, really nuanced and in-depth conversations. Now we have all of the opportunity to answer questions, engage with different characters, people on sites, different expertise, or experts in different areas of the site. Uh, so this is absolutely the best time uh, to come on out and uh, take it all in. Excellent. Um, so you mentioned a lot about our outdoor experiences and what people can see when they come here. But what if people want to get something to eat when they're here? What if they get hungry? Fantastic. Yes, we have a food truck that is available out in a large field. Uh, we have touchless ordering available in outdoor dining spaces at the Mount Vernon Inn, where you can scan a QR code enter in what you want to order. Uh, your server who's coming out uh, with, uh, with a mask is able to deliver your food in a safe uh, environment. They disinfect everything following all the regulations uh, put out by the Food Drug Administration, the, the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, so we do have a couple options, outdoor dining uh, and, and quick grab and go here closer uh, to the historic area. Perfect. And we have a question from Scarlett. Uh, do you know what type of take-home crafts will be offered? Very excited for this. Oh, that is an excellent question. And I unfortunately don't know. It's a, it's going to be a brand new program coming out. So again, I would check on our website, www.mountvernon.org slash open, and we'll get more information out for you there on the specific types of crafts. And also, hello to you too, Scarlett. Had the opportunity to meet you as well. So <laughs> hope you're doing well. Nice. And Jeremy, you had mentioned that the Lives Bound Together exhibition is open, um, but what can you talk about other indoor spaces that are open right now? Right now, the indoor spaces that are open are the museum and the education center. Both uh, will have one-way directional traffic through them. We'll also have a limit to the number of people that can go inside uh, at a time. Um, and again, that's all in accordance to the safety and health regulations from, from the governor want to make sure everybody uh, feels comfortable when they're here on the spaces. Uh, and soon, shortly, we will have the, the mansion open in a, in a couple weeks or if not less. Great. And uh, Jim asked, how much land, another history question, um, how much land did George Washington own? Did it include all the way to the tour place that makes whiskey, the distillery? Oh, uh, yeah, the Grismillan Distillery. Yes. Yeah, so the Mount Vernon property was five separate farms on 8,000 contiguous acres of land. So that's about 12 and a half square miles or so of property. Uh, the Grist Mill and Distillery site, yes, that was all a part of 
uh, the Washington property went up over modern day Route 1 for those who live in the area. Um, the Manton House farm here was kind of the seat of the main farm system and the four outlying farms were the agricultural production centers. Excellent. And Cynthia asks, I know there is plenty of parking, but has that changed in any way? I was wondering if any of the parking lots had been cordoned off to make more room for walkers or anything. Nope, parking is ready and available. Super. So we have uh, a comment from um, Anthony from Arnold, Maryland. He says, man, I missed that view, even though it was only a couple months working with Jeremy and the other history interpreters was one of the most enjoyable experiences I've ever had. Can't think of a better group of colleagues than history interpreter staff. So Thank you very just much. wanted Appreciate to pass that, that along. <laughs> All right, and we've got a question from James. Oh, this is a good question. Is your gift shop open? Yes, the gift shop is open. Again, uh, traffic uh, patterns as well, uh, some limiting on the total numbers in at a time. But yes, our gift shop is open. And we also have an online ordering if you are still interested in getting some items from the gift shop, and maybe don't want to come all the way into the estate, you can visit our shops online through our website. Perfect. And we have another question from Cynthia. I know you mentioned Tobias Lear. Actually, he's walking just over there. Um, what plans do you have for outside talks with interpreters in the future? I know this is all being considered, but wondered how this might work outside. Yeah, so it, you may not be able to see it, but we have uh, areas that are roped off, designated for our character interpreter staff. And we're really looking into ways that we could bring a lot of these experiences out and about in kind of controlled settings. If you haven't had a chance, go back and look through some of our catalog of live streams. Uh, the incomparable Brenda Parker portraying Caroline Branham and many other uh, enslaved people just did a fantastic program called Freedom Skies, really follows the lives of many of these enslaved individuals beyond the end of Washington's life here in 1799 and what they did uh, later in life. Fantastic, it's a great way to really think in depth about you know, the realities of of slavery at a place like Mount Vernon and also how that impacts us today and as we go further. Um, and we really want to be able to bring experiences like that to our audiences around and about on the estate. So uh, look forward through the rest of the summer and into the early fall as we're able to to increase some of the, those programs and bringing them to you in wonderful outdoor spaces so that you can be safe and distant. Perfect. Thanks, Jeremy. And we have another history question from Michael. He asks, Washington must have been away from the mansion a lot from 1770 through his two presidential terms until death. Was he at Mount Vernon that much? Yeah, so he lived at Mount Vernon for about 40 years, or that was what he called home. Uh, but he was away for about half of it. Uh, he was away during the French and Indian War when he was the com colonel and commander in chief of the Virginia Regiment. Uh, it often gets overlooked to his, his service in the French and Indian War. Uh, he, of course, was away during the eight years of the uh, war for independence. And then again, as president, he was away uh, for a vast majority of the time. It was part of what Washington felt was his his duty uh, to answer the call whenever uh, the public needed him, that, that service, which is part of the inspiration we find here at Mount Vernon with him. Excellent. And I think we have another question from William Jones. Um, could you identify from the edifice behind you, Ron Chernow's biography noted that Washington changed the entrance of his home? Well, so what we're looking at here is the riverfront, the piazza side of the mansion. And traditionally, uh, homes like this, the, the front faces the river, right? Uh, and so when Washington begins expansion on the estate, he actually kind of redoes everything, puts a grander staircase in, and a lot of guests would still enter by the circle side on the other side of the home. Now, we get this question all the time, what's the front of the house? You know, Washington kind of goes around it by calling one side the east front and the other side the west front. Uh, so therefore you have two front doors and no, no back doors. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question. Perfect, yeah, that is often a, a question, <laughs> common question from folks. Um, Werner asks, what exhibit will take the place of Lives Bound Together? Which actually, I don't think we've mentioned, but it, it has been extended. Yes, Lives Bound Together has been extended uh, into, I believe, July of 2021. Uh, then uh, as part of just the rotation we do throughout the museum, 
uh, a new exhibition plate will go into place. At this point, I, I do not know what uh, is going to be replacing it, and I'm sure we'll be able to fill that out into the comments. So I, I apologize on uh, on that for you. But a lot of the elements of the Lives Bound Together exhibition will be incorporated into that, as well as into our education center. Super. And David asked a question about archaeology. He said, are archaeological digs still taking place at Mount Vernon, or have they been temporarily halted because of safety precautions? I, I don't, unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that question. I figured. I thought I would ask. <laughs> we'll get back to you on that one, David. And uh, Christy says, I love Mount Vernon. We are from California and cannot wait to get back. We look forward to seeing you again, Christy. And I think that's all the questions we have for today. But thank you so much, Jeremy, for joining us. And can you just remind us of how we can find out more about what's happening in Mount Vernon? Yes, thanks. And as always, go to our website, www.mountvernon.org. Go to slash open. It will relay all of this information that we have, everything that we have available. And we look forward to seeing everybody come on out. So thank you.